Phenomena Women Global was established in 2018. I was going through a phase in my life when I was like, I had a career and I was thinking, is this the path I want to go? Somehow you feel, sometimes you don't grow in your career, like you can remain in one position for a long time and you feel like you want to change. I did a leadership course and I went for a coaching session and in that coaching session the lady asked me, so why are you here? I said, I want to learn how to get a promotion, I want to move up. She said, get a promotion but to do what? What is your bigger vision in life? What has your God or your Creator put you in this world to do? So I went on this journey of reflection of what do I want to do in my life? And one of the main things that popped up is that I wanted to support women like me advance, People, women especially who look like me, advance in their lives, advance in their careers, because we know that sometimes it's difficult because of your race or sometimes because of your gender. And so we started uh, this network, bringing women of all walks of life, different di professions, different backgrounds, different races, to meet once a year and have a, a, this space to share, share different issues, share different topics, and, and just grow our network. When I was invited to deliver this keynote address, at uh, this year's annual leadership conference. I must say I initially hesitated seeing that it is happening at the onset of the buzzing Geneva meeting season. But of course when I saw the theme uh, of this conference, she leads women thriving in leadership, careers and business post-COVID. I read through the goal, objectives and wide-ranging subjects that you're going to be looking at today. I could not resist. For I have always believed that indeed women must lead, women must thrive in leadership, careers and business, post-COVID and beyond, because women are good at this. After all, I've done this all my life, volunteered my time with other women and men to uplift other women on weekends, wake up early, drive kilometers to meet rural women and conduct workshops and all that, whether it was at home, in the region, indeed globally. So I believe this is my calling and I will do it wherever I am. I was told when I was Attorney General for 11 years, I don't know where the time went, I was often reminded that, you know, you are not a gender activist anymore, you work for government. And I said, we should all be gender activists, including the highest levels of decision making. Because gender equality, after all, is an official policy of the Botswana government, of many governments, and of the global community under SDG 5. If you have achieved success in a space where there are a few like you, look behind you. And that's not just to see how far you've come, but to see who else you can help to get where you are. But actually teaching and open doors for someone else doesn't threaten your position, it strengthens it. Good afternoon, gorgeous ladies. How are you all doing? Good. I hope you all have had a fulfilling day. For me, it's been so inspiring and a privilege to be among such empowered women. So I will be leading you onto two breathing exercises and a grounding exercise. The breathing exercise, what it does is actually it helps activate your parasympathetic nervous system that helps calm your body down, that helps counter-react the fight or flight response that we all have. You know, as women, we keep going and going and going, it's like the energizer bunny. You know, but sometimes we just need to calm down and settle down and bring our body back into balance. So, if you are ready, if you, I would like to just invite you to just sit back comfortably into your chair and just close your eyes. Just ground your feet, plant your feet onto the ground and just feel supported by the ground. 
Just take a moment to just connect with your breath. Taking deep breaths in and deep breaths out. So I am so excited to get to have this conversation with Miss Margaret. I got to spend a little bit of time with her yesterday, but I really felt like I was talking to Maya Angelou or Martin Luther King. That's how powerful this lady is. What, what shaped my career was when I was in my lower school, my father used to bring newspapers home in English, and she wanted me to translate them for him. Every day he would bring a paper in, a, in English and I would translate in our local language and he would listen. And you know that what it takes. It's politics, it's about what the current affairs going on in your country. And I would sit down every day and translate for him the papers. That actually shaped my future career because I became very conversant with what goes on in our country right from primary school. from almost eight different countries. UK, South Africa, Nigeria, Uganda, Zimbabwe, U um, France, Sweden, Netherlands, and the US, and I think I left something out, but South Africa, oh my God, and Zim, Malawi, Ghana, Kenya, and of course this wonderful, beautiful country, Switzerland. 